the slowest pace at which one can die. Well, this I am saying it funny, but I'm telling you this is quite an alarming statement. Welcome to this episode of Youth Diary. Today we have with us Dr. Shine Shukur from Kim's Hospital, Cochin. We see a varied number of cases uh, like asthma, uh, smoking related issues, then uh, infections. Uh, uh, infections are one part that uh, you, you are now seeing more common in our city life. Uh, then uh, allergy, allergy can have uh, various manifestations. One is asthma, then uh, allergic rhinitis, then allergic dermatitis. So these patients might be going to different specialities, uh, but the underlying problem might be the same. Uh, then what we see in and around uh, in young adult group uh, is because uh, they have depression, anxiety problems. Uh, these problems usually sometimes they don't manifest in the real way that they come to you telling that I'm depressed or I'm anxious. They might be coming with uh, hyperventilation, uh, breathing difficulty, uh, something like that. It will be a uh, bit uh, difficult to find out uh, in the first visit. So lots of cases uh, in different varied manifestations, particularly uh, the allergy part is the one that is uh, predominant. Well, doctor, we have few questions from the audience side. Now, this is the first question. Hi, I'm Jolzina from Amrita School of Arts and Sciences. Doctor. Most of the youngsters are facing obesity problems. What are the reasons for that? Obesity my, mainly uh, at first might not present to our department since we are a spe super specialized department that is respiratory medicine. Uh, they might present to the general physician or uh, other departments, uh, but at times they come to us uh, particularly with this complaint of uh, uh, breathing issues They're like what we call the metabolic syndrome, the hypertension, diabetes all together with that obesity. Uh, this is mainly, uh, as you know, everywhere, even in America, whichever country you take, the number of obese people are increasing. And so primarily coming to understanding obesity, you should know what is obesity. Obesity uh, can be defined only if you know what is BMI. BMI stands for body mass index. Uh, like you should know your uh, weight and you should know your height. With that, if you, you just need to calculate it. If you don't know how to calculate it, you can download an app in your mobile and just keep a track of your height and weight and just calculate and you'll get the number. That's the body mass index. Normally, it should be somewhere between 18 to 24. That, that means healthy. When you go above 18 up to 30, you call it overweight. So it's like an early alarm uh, to understand that you are going out of the safe zone. When you go from 30 to 40, it's called as obesity. And when you go beyond 40, it's called as morbid obesity, which means that this BMI group of people definitely will have some illness. But 30 to 40 of BMI is considered obesity. That is also very important to note. So if you can uh, try to keep a track of your BMI, you will understand how healthy you are, how is your build. That will be really great if you can do. Now, once you understand that you are in the overweight or obese category, then uh, mainly the respiratory problems that they can develop is something called as OSA, that is obstructive sleep apnea. In this condition, uh, the, uh, the, 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 you really won't be initially understanding that you are having a problem, but it might be your wife or your children or somebody near to you who stays at your home who will be uh, bringing you to the doctor telling that he snores in the night because of that uh, he you can't sleep and right now in and around city you can see a lot of flex which shows that uh, are you uh, snoring then please come and visit the doctor if, uh, initially when you come to the diagnostic part you can do both that uh, diagnostic and therapeutic in one night itself otherwise you can do it in a separate night but mainly, before coming to that, how it presents to a doctor is like uh, you might be a big time snorer. The real concept that who snores better are the bus sleepers is a wrong fact. Now it's proven wrong. Previously, we didn't have much of the know-how regarding that. Now, if you are a snorer, understand that you are in trouble. <laughs> okay? 
So if you are a snorer and if the snoring is affecting you in a sense that when you wake up in the morning after your sleep you feel you are not fresh, after I sleep also you are not feeling fresh, you are feeling drowsy, you are having excessive uh, sleep disorder like uh, during the daytime you are sleeping more, once you sit and read a paper, you work in the office, you just keep on dozing off that's a problem then uh, poor concentration you can't concentrate on your work and uh, increase in stress and anger if you are having all these problems then try to visit a doctor and uh, basically we will calculate your body mass index we will find out whether you are a candidate to undergo sleep study or uh, uh, you just have the obesity but you don't have any big systemic manifestations but if we think that there is a problem then the next thing what we have to do is a sleep study um, it's really important for the youth actually because um, if you the, the studies have proven that those who are having this obstructive sleep apnea uh, obstructive sleep apnea means basically when you sleep in the night and when you snore the snore happens because your airways gets compressed because of your weight and all so when the airway compression is more and more the intensity of the snore increases until you don't snore when the completely the airway collapses during this period uh, you are not breathing in and you are not your body is not getting oxygen mm -hmm. so it causes a jerky awakening from the sleep which the patient might not be realizing but uh, his wife or children might be seeing that he is having that kind of issue so if you are having all these problems then we have to look into the uh, study uh, why it is important uh, previously as well as I was saying is that uh, those people who are having this problem are at increased risk of developing heart attacks, uh, cerebrovascular accidents like stroke and uh, hypertension, diabetes, all these risk factors increases. So this is if you are a person who is overweight or obese, uh, this is one thing that you need to talk to your family whether are you suffering any of these problems are you having if you are having snoring you need to talk to them then we will be really able to help you so if a problem is there then uh, if you are diagnosing a person with uh, obstructive sleep apnea then what you really need to do is uh, you need to how first thing is you need to tackle his obesity M many ways you can tackle the obesity medically surgically uh, some people go for surgical uh, options some people prefer medical options so medical options you have variety of options um, to reduce the weight then um, and if it's a very severe problem then you will need uh, therapeutic support with uh, machines well we have the next question from the audience side hi i am lavi mariam rajan from amuda school of arts and sciences doctor what are the symptoms of respiratory allergy allergy can be anything and everything allergy can be anything and everything so it's like uh, allergy means it's a hypersensitivity reaction of our body um, uh, by our immune system uh, to anything it can be. It can be a food, it can be dust, it can be uh, pollen, it can be strong smells, all these things, a strong smell, all these things. Uh, so when it might not be a problem for another person, but it, it will be not harmful for another person, but it might be harmful for me or somebody else. So it's like uh, when you are exposed to an allergen, so your body has a hypersensitivity reaction. Your body will react very, as you know what is hyper, it's, it's, it's in a double, triple times than it is supposed to react. When your body reacts in that way, then you fall sick. Um, it can manifest in many ways, like uh, it can involve your, uh, from the tip to the bottom it can involve your nose when you when it affects your nose you call it as allergic rhinitis when it affects your throat you call it as uh, allergic cough and you have a cough then it's allergic cough uh, more down into the lower airways when it goes you call it as asthma that's where the asthma comes uh, that's the big chunk of patients that uh, I see or come to me then you can have it over the skin, um, you call it allergic dermatitis. Most of the chunk of patients that present to a dermatologist will be having the problem. To an ENT person will be having this problem. When it affects your nose or it affects your airways, eyes or skin, it manifests in different ways. Many patients will have permutations and combinations of all these things. 
some will be having a, a problem in the nose and in the lungs some will be having the problem in throat cough and breathing difficulty some will be having itching of the eyes and the nasal problem the only thing is you need to understand whether it's because of allergy so you need to take a detailed history in the uh, patient's uh, day to day life when he gets exposed to the problem what problem he gets exposed to whether is there a problem that he gets exposed to that causes this so it will be only evident by a detailed uh, history taking you need to spend time with the person talk to them each try to pinpoint what are they coming to contact with even uh, for some ladies makeup is a problem when they get uh, exposed to this cosmetic uh, dust and powders they will start developing itching and uh, uh, cough and breathing difficulty for cosmetic allergy i don't see actually much number of cases it will be a very small number of cases might be because this part of uh, uh, the world in india they, it's still that cosmetic population is not very high when you compare it, uh, to the other countries that might be a reason um, still what we see is the school going population the um, working population any population you can have the problem particularly those who are exposed to constant dust particularly in uh, exposed to constant dust people who are traveling uh, pollution, pollution uh, very true inside whether it can pollution can be both indoor and outdoor it can be inside your house and it can be outside your house like inside your house if you are sitting in an office whether it can be an it company also if your uh, air conditioning system is not properly maintained or uh, it's not properly serviced then uh, that dust can accumulate and then uh, you will have a recurrent respiratory infections and uh, uh, people will present in that way so uh, when allergy enters the body when an allergen comes in contact with the body through which are source through the skin nose or oral once it enters the body produces a reaction the reactions go so hyper that in the lungs it actually causes a bronchospasm the, our bronchus uh, our bronchi means our airways they are tube tube like they are tube in shape so this the the airways become more narrower because the reaction happens and that is called as bronchoconstriction or bronchospasm so when that problem happens it will be difficult for the air to go inside and when that resistance increases you really feel that you are taking a breath if you really have those kind of problems particularly in this side of uh, kerala we see more of cases if you have that problem then we have to evaluate accordingly whether you are having that problem according to the system which is involved for me if it's respiratory particularly how we will find out whether the patient is person is having asthma is that we do a lung function test so it's a breathing uh, test when you where you breathe into a machine and uh, take an inhalation so in that test you will understand whether you are suffering that problem then it needs to be corrected by youth i mean not the uh, people who are just 20 and above even the school going population which is a big group of population that is actually missed out they might be going to pediatricians recurrent uh, visits to a pediatrician um with a chest infection or a respiratory infection but the primary cause will be the allergen the allergen causing a reaction following which the baby is having a secondary infection so that population needs to be targeted very much so that you can have a better control when they become older that uh, smoking is having the uh, cigarette smoke is having the maximum addiction when you compare to alcohol or uh, any other hashish cocaine whatever it may be cigarette smoking is having the maximum addiction if you take the leading killer diseases in the world most of them are because of smoking cancer um, most of the um, heart attacks stroke cerebrovascular accidents 
COPD, which is the third killer disease. COPD means chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That's a disease that affects the airways. Why? Because uh, smoking, uh, it might not affect all the people who smoke won't have a respiratory problem. Like I told about COPD, even though it's uh, not seen in much in the youth, it might be seen after your 50, 45, 50 years of age. But the cause for the disease starts in your youth when you smoke. But understand that if your respiratory system won't be affected with smoking, some system will be affected in any form. It might be the heart, it might be the brain, it might be the lungs, whichever it may be. Uh, the increasing number of cancers that we are seeing, particularly in the younger age group, we are seeing a lot of cancers nowadays, um, more can be attributed because of heavy smoking. I have heard my professors and all uh, telling that they, they have seen cases, the youngest person who, has getting, who was getting an MI might be around 35 or something. Mm -hmm. I have seen people who are getting MI means uh, attack, heart attack, getting uh, a, attack at around 25 years of age. That, yes. yeah, we have seen that. So one way or other it will affect the system, uh, the, your body, but when it affects the respiratory system. Uh, things can be very bad. Why? Because as you told, no, there is nothing as bad as understanding that you are taking a breath. Yes. When you feel, every, because you breathe multiple, many number of times a day, when you can sense each breath of yours, that's a laborious breath and uh, really it's a bad time, that time will be a bad time. So, d d it's better to avoid smoking. Uh, smoking definitely it will you, your lung has an architecture. If you are an architect, when you build a building, you build it with an architect. You have a plan, you have a uh, uh, proposed plan uh, to that. But this architecture of your lung will be destroyed because of the smoke. A smoke will have at least 3000 to 4000 chemicals. Okay? When this enters your lung, it, it won't be easily seen. For some population, it will affect very fast. When if you smoke for one year, you will have developing problems like bronchitis and all. But people, there will be some people who will be smoking for 10, 15 years. Initially, they won't be any having problems, so they will keep on smoking. So it will affect each person at each different time, but definitely it will affect some part of the body. So when you are affected, it will be hard. If you are addicted, if you are telling that I can stop it anytime, not a problem, I have done it. Prior also, then understand that you are addicted. So you, if you can't stop it, if you make an intention, you try to stop smoking in one week. If you are still not able to stop smoking, understand that you are addicted and you need medical support. What I would like to say from a, I'm, I'm basically a pulmonologist, a respiratory physician who deals with the lungs and the airways. What I would like to say is that we are not living in a clean environment um, that we know and uh, we have become used to living in that kind of an environment and we have, we have been seeing our children falling sick recurrently. Our, in our childhood we have never fallen this sick. Um, we, I, I hardly remember a time where I had to visit a doctor five to six times in a year. You need a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle is not fun. It's 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 you should understand how it's how you uh, plant a tree. If you plant a tree, you water it properly, you feed it with uh, fertilizers, all those things, it will grow up and it will give you fruits. But if you plant a tree and you just say that I have planted, I, I don't have to look back, then it might sometimes perish or it might sometimes grow. So it's the same way as your body. It's like a a small plant. You need to properly uh, feed it. Yeah, that's true. Recently, I had uh, heard uh, Mamuti sir, our senior actor, who told that what you eat shows outside. Yeah. And that's a really great statement. Uh, that what you consume is how it, and it's just one part of a healthy lifestyle. Well, thank you so much, doctor, for coming to the show and giving us such valuable information. I'm sure my audience would have got a lot if they are paying attention to whatever we said. Well, over to you guys. You stay healthy and lead a very simple life. No more show-offs required because smoking is injurious to health. Until next week, you meet me. You can always send us mail on youthdiaryrosebowl at gmail.com. Until then, bye-bye.